Hi folks, welcome to another tutorial from SQL Maestros. Last week, I delivered our popular masterclass on SQL Server internals, troubleshooting and performance tuning. 40 hours program spread over two weeks, 10 days, four hours each day. It was a roller coaster ride. 14 modules were delivered. So we had the breadth and we had the depth. A lot of deep dive demos. When I was delivering the index tuning module there, we had a topic on fragmentation and while demoing fragmentation, there was a lot of discussion about the fill factor. So I thought, why not for this tutorial, for this video, pick up the fill factor demo from our masterclass and show it to you. Now, the recordings of the masterclass, of course, is available on sqlmaestros.com. So either you can access the recordings or you may opt to join live whenever the next batch is scheduled. All information is available on sqlmaestros.com. Now, let's get inside the demo for fill factor. So this is the module list for the masterclass. As you can see, 14 detailed modules out there. And we're going to jump in module 10, which is index tuning. Inside index tuning, I will jump over to, wow, a lot of stuff. Okay, that's not an index tuning, actually. That is an index internals. So that's in module 8, statistics and index internals. Let's go inside that. And in stats and index internals, jump over to indexes. We have the module fragmentation, some module rather. Let's go inside this and we have fillfactor.sql. Now fill factor is a technique. It's an option when you are creating an index or when you're rebuilding an index. And that specifies how much space you want to fill in that page. So let's say when you're rebuilding the index, let's say a clustered index, and you specify fill factor of 80, which means you want to fill this page 80% approximately, and you want to leave 20% free. Why do you want to leave 20% free? Because you may have new rows coming in. That's one of the reasons. And the other reason could be if you're updating data and by the virtue of updating data, you're increasing the size of the row. Let's say there is there are, you know, wire chair columns, etc., and you're expanding the size of the row. So there is room for expansion. It's all about keeping that 20% room. Because if that room is not there, let's say the page is full up to 100% and then you have a new row coming in and by the order of clustered index, the, the row has to go into the correct page. It will split the page. 50% of the record approximately will move over to a new page and that new page will be allocated the, at the end of the file and all of that will lead to fragmentation. So by having the right fill factor in place, you can minimize fragmentation. When you have extensive fragmentation, of course, your queries will suffer. They suffer a lot when you're really dealing with magnetic disks, less when you're dealing with, uh, let's say, SSDs, but still there is an overhead. Okay, so let's go and look into this demonstration. In this demonstration, I'm not really explaining you how fragmentation happens, page split, etc. If you want to learn about page splits and fragmentations, you should watch other videos that are available on sqlmaestros.com or in the YouTube channel. Just search in this YouTube channel, type page split or fragmentation and you will come across those videos. In this one, let's just quickly go and look into fill factor. Okay, so we're going to use TempDB here and I'm going to create a table called T1. This T1 is relatively a very small table with three columns. You have column one, column two, and column three. Look at the different uh, attributes out there. So you have integer there. We did, uh, put this as an identity uh, attribute. And then you have two columns, column two and three with varchar 50 each. The default value is S. Then we create a unique clustered index on column one. So this happens to be our clustered index. So data, data is physically going to be arranged with the values that you have in column one. Let's go and create the table. There you go. Now let's insert the rows and we're going to run this for a few seconds, not few seconds. I've put a counter out there actually. So we're going to insert about 10,000 rows. So we just make it very quick. 10,000 rows is what we are going to insert in this table T1. Let's go and execute this. Now, just let's quickly check the data, get the 10 rows out there. So you have this column one identity, one to 10 and what, and, and so on. You have column two with values S default and column three with value S default. Now let's look at the fragmentation. We are using the DMV, sysdmdb index physical stats to check out the fragmentation in T1 table. We just have one clustered index, so it will show up here. 
the fragmentation is very very minimal just negligible three percent so nothing to bother nothing to worry about now we are going to do a mass update this is our first update where we are expanding the size of the row remember column 2 has a value just s and it's declared as varchar 50 so we're just trying to pump in more data and the and each row is going to expand and there's no room in uh, on the page which means because when we created the clustered index we did not specify any fill factor so fill factor by default is either 0 or 100 which means fill the page to its entirety fill the page completely don't leave any space now let's expand the rows let's go and execute this commands completed successfully let's go and check the fragmentation level let's go and execute this and you will see that we have touched about 50 percent fragmentation now so the data is fragmented it's not so bad but yet you have 50 percent fragmentation now we are going to rebuild the index we have this clustered index which we are rebuilding and we are specifying a fill factor of 80. Now the fill factor value here could be 90, 85, 80, 70, 75, whatever. It, it, there has to be a initial value that you are setting and then you can fine tune it based on the workload, based on your observation as to what's the best. So of course, after you set the initial value, a bit of fine tuning will be required. Only for the purpose of demo, I have set the fill factor to 80. Let's do this and execute. Now, what is this telling SQL Server? I'm rearranging the pages, right? By rebuilding the index, it's as good as dropping it and recreating the index again. When you recreate the index, the rebuilding process happens from leaf to intermediate to root level. So the clustered index pages are, and clustered index is the data. So the entire data is being rebuilt again. Pages are being rearranged and ordered based on the first column, which has the identity property. And now in every page, you're leaving approximately 20% space free so that there is room for new data to come in and you can expand rows and hopefully fragmentation will be less. It will not be zero, but at least it will be minimized. Let's do that. <clears throat> Have we rebuilt? Yes, we have done. Let's go and check the fragmentation now. Okay, fragmentation is zero, okay? Well, rebuild was, looks like perfect there. Now we are going to do a second update. We are updating column three now, and again, we are expanding the size of the row. Let's go and do this execution. And now, earlier, the fragmentation was touching about 50%. Now it's going to be much lesser. There will be some. <clears throat> but it's going to be much less and that's what we expect. So let's go and execute this and observe the fragmentation. There you go. And now the fragmentation is 18%. In my previous run, it was even less than 18%. In fact, it was less than 10%. So that's the whole idea. If you have the right fill factor in place, you can minimize fragmentation and that will do a whole lot of good to your data storage. And of course, it's going to affect query performance as well in a good way. Hopefully you enjoyed the tutorial and you learned something new. Do share the video, do give comments. And of course, I'm going to see you again with another tutorial next week. Cheers and happy SQL. If you like the content, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon so that you're notified on new videos. Most importantly, visit sqlmaestros.com. There's a lot of SQL learning resources out there, video courses, master classes, lab kits, ebooks, blogs, hands-on labs, and a lot more. Follow us on Twitter, at the rate SQL Maestros, and myself, A underscore Bunsel. Last but not the least, do subscribe to our newsletters. See you soon in another video. Goodbye.